Welcome to the first This Week in Bevy of 2025. Bevy 0.15.1 is out this week with the full list of changes viewable on GitHub, which also means that 0.15.2's milestone has also been created. Meanwhile, no standard support is forging ahead, and there's continued progress on some really interesting debugging information that I hope to see exposed via the Bevy remote protocol in the future. The wider community is also showing interesting progress with demos like Avian's conveyor belts and Hex's procedural meshes. Kicking it off with no standard support, no standard support has now been added to Bevy window, Bevy state, Bevy hierarchy, and Bevy input. In the process, an interesting facet of how no standard creates enable standard features was discovered. There are multiple preludes when it comes to Rust, and more specifically, whether or not no standard is in play, one of two standard library preludes, either standard prelude or core prelude, is made available. The selected prelude is implicitly imported, which, when combined with a specific style of feature enablement, can result in undesired behavior. This makes 17086 a great issue to review if you write no standard and standard crates. And next up, we've got custom projections and projection handling in general, which has been simplified in 17.063, which leaves us with comprehensive source tracking. Comprehensive source tracking can now track component mutation, event sources, and spawns and despawns. So it makes sense that the feature flag for these features has been renamed to track location in accordance with the current and expanding functionality. It does seem that this source tracking is going to be enabled through the remote protocol at some point in the future, which is really exciting to see Bevy remote protocol expanding in feature set. And that, of course, brings us to Alice's Merge Train, which is a maintainer-level view into active PRs, both those that are merging and those that need work. And let's kick off the showcases this week with a Rubik's Cube. This is a Rubik's Cube doing a pre-programmed set of moves, but the next steps are to implement an algorithm to solve the cube itself. Our next showcase is going to be pretty bright. And that, of course, is Sudoku. This is a Sudoku implementation, which is open source and available on GitHub, complete with the ability to mark potential numbers inside of the box, an auto candidate mode, and a timer for how long you've been playing at the top. This feels very polished, so if you're into Sudoku, definitely go check it out. All of the code is available on GitHub, which as always is linked on the This Week in Bevy website. And next up, we've got height map generation in hex, that's with two X's, which stands for hexagons, which you can see on screen. This is a generation of height maps and procedural meshes using hex. The functionality is from a recently merged PR. And as Finn Lizzie warned us, the Boyds are back in town. Reorganized code, reworked physics, and a fresh new README, this Boyds demo is available on GitHub as it continues following the paper it started with. Next up, we've got an HTML Lite proc macro for text. The section macro you can see here is for creating text that is a little bit like HTML, and you can see the output here as well. This code is also open sourced, so go check it out on GitHub, since as far as I know, it's not in a published crate, but is available in source. And then we've got a demo of an add-on for Bevy Mini Buffer called Bevy Mini Buffer Inspector. This provides Bevy Inspector eGUI actions that you can take inside of Bevy Mini Buffer. And <laughs> wow, well, you won't see it in the video, but that took me at least four takes to say Bevy Mini Buffer Inspector. <laughs> Next up, we've got height-based masking and blending. For each terrain type, a height map can be provided to control the blend in this grass versus rock path blending. And it's always a good week when Avian gets new features. This is a demo of conveyor belts implemented by applying a relative tangent velocity in contact modification hooks, which are coming soon to Avian. Who wants to build the uh, physics-based factory sim? <laughs> and we always love seeing progress. This is a reworked chicken asset, now with animations. It's been about a year since the white chicken was implemented, and the brown chicken is the new asset. There's an animation listed on the website, so go check it out if you're interested in that. And here's a 2D terrain editor with a number of settings that you can see on the left-hand side. Now it is a little bit hard to figure out what's going on here without a video or something to interact with, so hopefully the author will grace us with that in the future. And these are animated hypocycloids and hypotrochioids using gizmos with no video editing effects. And wow, I really hope I pronounced those. <laughs> An animated spotlight affects a glowing ring in this YouTube short. And this is some winter transition experiments for Torp, which we saw in a previous issue. The experiments intend to make the transition between seasons smoother, and if you're interested in the development of this game, they also have a link to their Discord in the Discord thread in the Bevy Discord, Discordception. And next up, we've actually got a crate, which is Bevy Prefs Lite, or Bevy Simple Prefs, depending on whether you're looking at the GitHub repo name or the crate name. Bevy Prefs Lite is currently an unpublished crate that provides cross-platform, including web, basic preferences support for Bevy applications. The word preferences in this context is used to mean user settings that are set while running the app, 
persistent across restarts, and implicitly saved. The README does a great job of explaining exactly what this crate is meant to solve. For example, it's not for saved games, but it is something that could save the current window size, so definitely give this a read to find out if this fits your functionality use case. And last up in the showcases, we've got Stove, which is an editor for modding maps for Unreal Engine games, which makes it a little bit different from the rest of the showcases that we usually have, which are usually bevy games, bevy crates, bevy libraries, and so on. This is a bevy application that is used to mod Unreal Engine games. And in our crates this week, first up, we've got Mevi. Mevi is a growing set of macros, which adds some witchcraft into Bevy. Currently, that witchcraft includes CSS-like functionality for Bevy UI components and your own as well as a simplified notation for color, val, and UI rect. Seldom Pixel got at 0.6 release this week. Seldom Pixel is for limited color palette pixel art games. 0.6 brings rendering extraction changes, dynamic draw resolutions, and updated APIs like required components and the use of assets v2. And Bevy Rand got a 0.9 release. Bevy Rand integrates the Rand ecosystem with Bevy's ECS. It provides a set of wrapper component and resource types that allow for safe access to a pseudo random number generator for generating, well, random numbers. In 0.9, Bevy Rand will no longer assume Wasm builds to be for the web. So your application crates will need an additional cargo toml configuration to enable that if you're targeting Wasm for the web. This is in preparation for future changes for how get random selects its entropy backend. And finally, we've got Bevy Mini Buffer 0.3. Bevy Mini Buffer is a developer console inspired by the user interface of classic Unix text editors rather than the Unix shell. 0.3 brings tape acts, which functions similar to keyboard macros. And first up in the educational section this week, we've got a basic video about component lifecycle hooks, followed by three posts about inventory and ability systems in an RPG setting. Uh, beware, these posts do not have a dark mode, and the page is almost pure white. And finally, from Rust Unit, we've got Bevy Mobile Frame Rate. Mobile devices require resource constrained approaches, and that extends to frame rate control in this post about controlling frame rate in Bevy 0.15 and technically 0.14 as well, on mobile devices. And that's it for this week. As always, we have all of the pull requests that were merged, as well as the issues and PRs that were opened this week. If you want to get involved, take a look or dive deeper. And I hope you have a great rest of your day. I'll see you next week.